Now you can put more than one. As a matter of fact, in your homework assignment, you're going to need to know how to do this. All right. So you can actually put multiple types in, a, in or multiple variables in a function. And we've seen that in PHP. And he's got an example where he's just going to do some simple multiplication. So he's got a class he called multiply. So that's the first class. And here's the ending bracket of that class. And everything he sticks inside of that has to, have, uh, curl, has to be well formed, right? Matching curly brackets. And so this one right here, it's a very simple method, just public static void. Why am I using void here? Have any idea? We're not returning anything. I'm just running the function. I'm sending it right to the print output. Now I'm gonna, we're going to get to return types in a moment, and it will return something, so this won't be void anymore. So void means there's no return type. Okay? I'm not returning anything. I'm just sending this right to the, uh, the, the, the console, okay? since I'm not returning it to the program. Okay, so I'm just going to call a double A and a double B, and whatever I put in for A and B, it's going to multiply. That's all there is to it. So in the main function, it's going to run whatever I put in the method. I called it times, and so I just go times 2, 2. And what would be the answer for that? Absolutely. And that will be? Okay. <laughs> I know I'm doing this to you. You're going to disguise it not. Here's next is uh, times 3 times 4. Huh? Okay. And that will be what, 12? Okay, so whenever it sees that times, it's going to run that method, and it's just sticking those numbers in for the A and B, and it runs it. That's all there is to it. Okay, got that. Okay, let's take a look at that Eclipse, because I, I actually have written that in Eclipse. So if you go to Multiply real quick here and bring that up. And, and there it is right there, so let's just run it. Oh, I got 4 and 12, but what if I wanted to run something else? Well, all I have to do is put a new number in there, right? I'm, just, I'm going to copy this. Or actually, uh, hold your Control-Alt uh, arrow down. And when you do that, it automatically gives you copy. What do you want to multiply? What times what? Okay, 5 times 7. So put that in there, and it's just going to call that method once again, stick those numbers in there, and does do the multiplication for you. And there you hit that. And that's 35. There you go. That's all there is to it. Got it? Great. Good, good, good. So that's all there really is to it. I mean, that methods are really easy. You've seen them before, and you're seeing them again here. So now we're going to get to the return type. Now, why do you want to return type? The important thing here is we're, we're not really returning anything right now. We're just actually causing a mathematical uh, operation. And you can actually, a lot of people use void and it, they, uh, very successfully, and they don't ever return anything. But they, that number goes internal to the computer, and it goes somewhere else. But eventually, you've got to return something to the screen or something somewhere. And so you need this return type. Now, what a return type does, it just takes where you put the function and you run it. It just puts the number or results back where the function is. And that's very important. It substitutes the function call for the results. That's what a return type does. Well, this is the old way of doing it. So we're using print screen, but we actually want to return. So let's go to the next one. All right, now here's how things change. Now I have a return type, right? See, they use the word return. And whatever you want to return, I'm no longer printing it out to the screen. Now down here, I'm actually going to print it out to the screen by putting the function running it there. Whatever the value is, is returned right in there, and then it's printed to the screen. Do you see the difference? What we're going to do now is we're still going to run the method, right? And when you run the method, it's going to take this return and stick it back for the method. So it sticks it back into it, where it is. And now we're going to print it out to the screen here. A little bit more subtle than what we did before, but what you have to remember about return types is that wherever the function is, it substitutes the value that the method returns into where the function exists. This is very important. You're going to see this again. I got some, I got some uh, programs where you're going to see this over and over again, okay? And so let's go ahead and go to Eclipse. I have this in Eclipse, and we're going to run it. Let's hope I have something called. Here it is, square return. Same program, and I'm just going to run it. And I get 25 and 4. Uh, the overall theme here is basically, in this case, is how to work with methods and get, and get your return values correct. I guess the important thing you need to realize here is that, see, I'm not using a void anymore. See, the name is not void. What is it? It's double. I'm sending back the type, which tells me that I'm not just running a method and sending it to the console anymore. What I'm actually doing is sending the value out somewhere, and I'm sending it out where I call it. And that's a very efficient way to work with code. I guess that's the way to put it. All right, so we're going to move on, and you're going to see this again, so don't worry about it. A scope is really important, and we've seen scope in PHP. Now, let me just give an example of scope so we don't get too 
wrapped around the axis. Remember when you had a class and you called a scope public or a variable public in that class, then other classes could use it. But if you use the private name of classes inside a class, then only that class could use it. That's called scope. You're restricting access to your variables or to your methods. That's what scope is. And uh, they have a fairly complicated example of scope that won't run when you try to put an eclipse, okay? But basically, scope will be restricted to wherever uh, you declare the variable. And so if you declare this variable outside here, and print it here, you'll get that variable. The variable inside here, declared inside here, will only be good for inside that loop. So scope is, in this case, is only um, applicable to where you declare it. Now I believe I have a whole bunch of notes on that that I want you to read through. And uh, let's see if I got the, the notes here. Yeah, here it is, right here. I, I, this is actually not a video on scope. This is actually kind of a language reference. I got a little URL for you to go to scope. Scope of a variable is part of the program over which the variable can be referenced. Okay, So scope is where the variable can be referenced and uh, you cannot refer to a variable before its decoration. Uh, you can declare a variable in several different places. Okay, uh, In a class body as a class fields variables declared here are referenced to as class level variables. And then if you put them in the constructor, they're only allowed in the constructor. In the body, they're only allowed in the body. In the if statement or in a statement, they're only allowed in the statement. But what's important to us when you start building classes is that whole protected and private and public uh, variable names, which allow uh, variables to be cha shared between classes or to be restricted and only be allowed within a certain class. And you've seen that before. And that's my quickie on scope. Take a look at the HTML article, OK? And you'll be using scope as we build more and more classes in Java. Just an introduction here to it. It's not going to be the most important theme that you get today. Okay, building blocks in uh, Java. I don't really like this part of the lecture because he seems to lead you to the idea that methods are the building blocks for uh, Java programs and that they're reusable. And yes, in a sense, yes, but it's not methods that are the building blocks. It's classes that are building blocks. And as we discussed in PHP, as you, when you build a class, it's reusable. And so you can have a huge class. You may not have wrote it. It may be thousands of lines. But you can bring that class over into your Java system and use it. Now, maybe that class doesn't quite do what you want. But there's a wonderful thing called override. And so you can override methods in that class and make them do what you want. So the great thing about Java is there's already been a huge amount of code out there written in Java that you'll have access to, OK? and that you can use to help you build your systems with. And so one of your things you want to be as a smart Java programmer is try not to write everything from scratch. Go out there and see if it's already been written. Yeah, then have the skills to work with the object-oriented program so that you can go ahead and modify the classes, you know, override uh, methods and get it working the way you need to. And that's the skill you really need. I mean, because there's just too much out there. You can't write anything from scratch. You can't live enough lifetimes to do that. Grab classes written by someone else, modify them, and get them run the way you do. And that's the way successful programmers do it. Okay, so uh, yes, methods are very important, but classes are made up of methods, and classes are what are the building blocks of Java. Okay, so just a correction on that slide right there.